Bernard and Elsie dig deep to find out who's been stealing secrets from the park and find a lot more than they bargained for. And Maeve discovers her whole world is fake. Doesn't seem to stop her, though. It's HBO's Westworld, Season 1, Episode 6, The Adversary. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of Westworld. So, of course, spoilers ahead, warning as always. All right, so let's go. Uh, great episode this week, really strong, really just grabbing the meat of the storyline and pulling it forward. Less focus on what's going in on the park, really more focusing on the behind the scenes and the big machinations that are happening. Uh, do have to say, standout performance of the week by far goes to Tandy Newton. Just incredible stuff. Very subtle, very powerful performance from her. Uh, and we're going to be getting to that in just a little bit. Uh, but I want to start out talking about um, Bernard and Elsie and their whole pursuit of the satellite uplink data they found inside the host's arm there. Um, really great. Just love the whole investigative bit, finding more of the answers. And I love their little kind of back and forth, even the very beginning of the episode when Elsie is telling Bernard, hey, I thought that it might have been you, uh, but you've been here for so long. If you wanted to betray us, you would have done that a whole, a long time ago. Anyway, just, just fun stuff. Professional and yet playful, just a great little dialogue, a great little moments back and forth behind them. I just, I really enjoyed that. Um, but really what we're finding out here is that Somebody has been communicating. Well, first off, we find out as, as Elsie finally gets to, they track down the GPS data, and that sends Elsie off into the abandoned old uh, um, theater there. First, why? Why by yourself, Elsie? Why you have to be going out here? It's like in the middle of the night, out somewhere, looking for curious information that somebody obviously wants to keep hidden. Would you do this alone? I mean, okay, admittedly, probably can't really take anyone else with her who she know to trust, but still, I don't know, not always the best move. Um, but what we're finding out from this information, one, is that Teresa is behind, at least behind using those codes, using that information to get that satellite uh, information out. Now, why is she doing it? That's a good question. Is she working for um, the board? because it's one of their satellites, it's the park satellites that it's connecting up to. So is it someone from the board? Is she kind of reporting secretly behind the scenes? Uh, maybe it has something to do with the Chinese. She was having the conversation with that one uh, Chinese gentleman on the communications. Um, so could be that. We don't really know what her motivation is uh, kind of behind that. But smart wise, at least Bernard does not tell her and cuts that off uh, when Elsie's call. Always take those calls. So one thing in films, when somebody calls you and you're about to say something important, just pause for a minute and take the call. It's always important. But she not only finds out this information, she finds a little bit more. And mainly that somebody is using an old communication pathway for the hosts in order to communicate with the host and start to change things. Now, a few things come up with this. One, it's only the older hosts. It's only some of the original ones that have been changed and modified because those are the only ones that still have this outdated community system. Two, most of these people seem to be involved with Arnold. And Arnold's name is popping up all over this episode. If we thought, what are you saying? If we thought that he was just partially involved, we don't. They keep dropping these things. We know that he's heavily involved in all of this. Uh, from Elsie's standpoint, she's thinking it might be Arnold just because of the way the programming was. Uh, as you said, you know, if Ar Arnold's dead, he's a very prolific coder for a dead guy. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. And even when, when uh, Bernard starts looking in at the original hosts, he's not only looking at the original hosts, but which are the ones that were made by Arnold. And of course, that gets kind of pushed up with his journey out into Sector 17, the quiet where nobody else is, um, and comes across Ford's family. Um, and there's been a little, a few theories and so on that the little kid seemed to be Ford as a child, and this certainly has played itself out. So yes, these are all Gen 1 robots, uh, androids, uh, built 
by Arnold, I guess it's a gift for uh, Ford that Ford has maintained over the years since hiding out in the central section of the park. Um, first off, face opening up, really gross, especially when face opens up and eye keeps blinking. That's really disturbing. Um, but even when, when Bernard walks in, I mean, before he finds out that the, this, is, this is Ford's family and he's talking to the, the dad, that's the question he asks, are you Arnold? Because Arnold's fingerprints are all over the place. Again, for a dead guy, he seems to be continuing to make some statements that were going on. And there's also that constant recurrence of the maze now. We saw the maze etched on the table where the guys were playing um, dominoes from. Of course, it was in the sketchbook that uh, Ford pulled out of his desk, and I'm guessing that might have been Arnold's old sketchbook. You saw a little picture of Dolores and some of the other things. Uh, but even at the end, even when we were looking at, uh, at Teddy and the Man in Black's little unfortunate encounter with the soldiers, uh, the branding that they're using is also the maze. So this is something that's starting to really come forward a lot more. I'm getting the idea this is not something that was so prevalent um, in the earlier days of the park before this kind of whole situation came up. That was probably why uh, Ford reacted so strongly when dug up uh, um, Arnold's notebook there. Um, but Arnold's fingerprints are really laying out here very strongly and we're starting to get the idea uh, whatever is happening is with these old hosts uh, that there are changes going on and they have been getting a lot of upgrades. One of course, of course, to Maeve as well which, like I said, we will get to in a whole little bit. So we've got a lot of that type of movement really kind of going forward here. And then the final bit, Elsie obviously discovers something before somebody comes in. Why? Because she went by herself. Um, and then gets grabbed. I'm guessing it's probably Bernard. Maybe it's Ford. Uh, I don't think that it's someone bad just because that would kind of be too easy for her to just disappear like that. Um, but, you know, obviously that's something that we're, we're gonna have to wait and see. Uh, but really starting to find these mechanical reasons why, and of course it explains the voices uh, that, um, that everyone's been hearing, the little kid as well, but also Dolores really in, in that sense. It explains where those voices are coming from as they're using this old communication setup. Now, is it Arnold? Is it an old program that Arnold set up? Is this someone acting on his behalf? Those are still questions we're gonna lay out, but I would not be surprised at all by the time we get to the end of this if we find out that Arnold is in fact still alive and doing something of his own uh, in the midst of the park. All right, well, let's get to Maeve and Tandy Newton's performance, which, like I said, was spectacular this week. Um, and first off, I... <laughs> I just really enjoyed the thought that Maeve is getting herself killed, upsetting the cowboy so she'd choke her out, um, just so she can get back and talk to Felix. I just thought that was hilarious. Uh, but even more so, really, their whole discussion of getting into the idea of, of what is real and what isn't real, and that kind of whole process um, that Maeve was going through this week, really astounding. And again, from an acting standpoint, when, they're, when, when she convinces Felix to take her upstairs and she's walking through all of the sections and seeing, you know, the bloody corpses of the hosts as they're getting washed off and repaired, and then going through the build section and seeing them all, you know, coming up from just skeletal formats into, and I have to say, another beautiful shot when they were filling them with that one with blood or fluid or whatever the internal things are, and just minute it comes in, it turn, gives color to the whole white husk. I just, that was just, that was beautiful. I mean, it was just wonderfully visually given. But as she's walking through and seeing all of these things, you can really read on her face the two part. One, she knows that she's not supposed to show any expression because the, the guise is, of course, that Felix is using the little behavior machine and walking her down and through here. So she's not walking consciously on her own. So she's got to maintain that kind of quiet, uh, uh, you know, ambivalence, not, not reacting to anything. And yet, in her face, subtly, quietly, you can see all of that emotion come through, all of the surprise and, and, and just the curiosity and, and the shock and the horror and just 
every level of that really was wonderfully conveyed. And like I said, it wasn't overly done. In a lesser actor's um, ability, this would have all been very big and wide-eyed and surprising. And, and, and Tanny was able to do all of that and keep it all very subtle and, except, and still extremely powerful. That is a tough thing to do with all that. And I thought she did an amazing job. She had better get an Emmy nod for this, is all I'm going to say. If she gets the award or not, that always becomes a political thing. But she should at least get a nomination because her performance in this is just really stand out. Uh, but again, all kind of interesting for her is she's sort of seeing that whole development and accepting, well, almost accepting that one little bit where she kind of broke herself uh, reading the behavior thing and seeing her words popping up as she is saying them and seeing that that is the process of her brain. She kind of like blew her own circuit, just knocked herself out. Scared the hell out of Felix. Um, but in some ways, it's almost like, okay, I just had to shut down to process and, and, and move on from all of these things, which really ends up seeing what it was that she did because suddenly she wakes back up and is more willing to just go, okay, well, show me these things, let's check things out. Where do we go from here? And from her stand up is she wants an upgrade. Fine, if this is reality, if this is the way that things are, I would like to see those changes. And, and the dynamic between her and Felix and then Sylvester when he comes in, oh, scared the hell out of Sylvester. That was awesome. She goes, as he attempts to go out to tattletale on Felix and she just jumps up with a scalpel. You really can say, look, the host might be programmed not to kill, but I don't think Sylvester was feeling that at that point. And when we find out uh, from Elsie's standpoint that there are so many changes that are going on with some of these older models and it's not just a narrative or, or anything like that, it's actually affecting all of their core functions. It says, so they could lie, like the, the little boy was lying to Ford later on, though he admitted it, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, but even with Mae, could she kill? Could she hurt? I know she's programmed not to, but there's already these changes that were going in. But Maeve is also programmed to know everyone's needs and to play on that. And that's even how she got, I think, Felix to go with her. That whole, when she grabbed his hand and just stroked it and held up, that's her job. As, as a prostitute in the park, as a madam in the park, that is her job to recognize the needs of people and to fulfill those, to fulfill those needs, to get them to do what she wants by applying the, the, those needs and such. So now that she is lucid on her own, or she is conscious, she can access all of those abilities quite effectively. Worked with the, uh, the human standpoint with Felix, and then more of the threatening self-interest standpoint uh, with Sylvester, who obviously is playing a little uh, job on the side letting guys uh, access the, the bots while they're unconscious. Again, she sees all of these things, but now she wants to know more. And so that final little bit where she's like, okay, this is all my thing. I want to feel painless, maybe not quite so loyal, so I'm not always obeying everyone there. Not sure of that. But the main thing, the intelligence boost. And that, again, Another marvelously done bit where you can see where that change comes in and she is almost drunk with the, the effect. Now, admittedly, Felix could have not gone her all the way up. Now, would she have known the difference? Um, but she did, and now she's going to have this whole new world that she's going to be able to dive into. Really understanding things of where she is and with these other programming changes, uh, like Sylvester had said, it wasn't, she's already had stuff, and we can tell that that is the stuff that, look, I'm just going to say that Arnold was changing. Until we get a better explanation of who this might be, I'm just going to say that it's Arnold. Um, we are now formulating a whole new kind of host inside the park, and now that Maeve is conscious of her position and going back into the park, where that's going to lead, oh, 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 that's going to be exciting. So we did get to see a little bit of the Man in Black and Teddy's little adventure. It wasn't really that much. It's just sort of moving things forward. I think in, in some ways we just get Teddy giving the explanation of the old Indian lore of what the maze is. Uh, that there was a guy who couldn't die, was killed many times, but always came back. 
And then finally, at one point, he came back, killed all of his oppressors, built a house, and then a maze around it um, that only he could navigate. So what that's all meaning in that sense, not really sure. Is there somebody at the center that he's trying to get to? Would that be Arnold? Would it be a host, an artificial host of Arnold? Uh, is it really just more symbolic? These are things that we're going to have to find out. Um, we did get also... Teddy going off on all the soldiers in a beautiful little shot of the Gatling gun going out. Um, Teddy is normally a heroic character. He's got an upper, uh, uh, he's got a narrative change for him that is changing his character. So I loved, uh, <laughs> I love Man in Black's reaction of, you think you know somebody. Well, Teddy's been reprogrammed. He's got a new mission in him. And you told him that Dolores uh, that Wyatt took Dolores, so of course he's going to do whatever he can to get to her. He loves her, much as a host can love. And one little bit, I you know, nothing is done by mistakes. I do believe that this was intended when Bernard went down into the basement to get the old GPS data. In the background, in one shot, there is a guy standing, the dark hat and everything. He's totally out of focus. We don't see who it is. But the first thing I thought of was Yul Brenner, the gunslinger from the original Westworld film, just standing out in the back. The whole look, the whole dress up, everything just immediately shouted Yul Brenner. Just shouted, there's the gunslinger. They didn't focus on him, of course. Yul Brenner is dead. Um, but I thought that was a nice little reference back because obviously he's going into the, into the bowels of the company where people don't go. These are all older models. So the fact that you've got the gunslinger from the original Westworld standing there in the background, I just thought that was a nice little nod. All right, so I think that's going to wrap us up for this week. I mean, there were a couple other little things that went on. I mean, we had Ford's last encounter with little, little Robert host um, and the whole deal with the dog that Robert heard this voice that told him, oh, you should kill the dog. And he was lying to him and even admitted that he was lying. All of this has Arnold's fingerprints on it. And even Ford is starting to think that Arnold is, if not somewhere in the park, because I think Arnold, Ford still believes that Arnold is dead, but there is some relevance. There is still some fingerprint of Arnold that is starting to rise up and, and, and make itself known. So... Um, that's all really interesting. You've got the whole bit with Lee uh, Sizemore, the programmer there. Loved him getting drunk and pissing on the map in the control room. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I don't know if he's trying to get fired, uh, but instead ends up being introduced to the new executive um, speaker for the board, which was the girl that he ran into uh, in the Mesa bar there. And he knew something was going on. The minute he started talking, explaining there were problems with the host, it was like, is she a reporter? Is she a spy? There is some reason why she is there because she, I think, eyed him more than he eyed her. We find out, yeah, she is a speaker. She's a representative of the board. And there are definitely some changes going on because Ford is causing a big ruckus. He's moving people around, disrupting a lot of narrative storylines. Lee doesn't want to go and clean that up. So we're going to be getting a conflict now between the board and Ford. Um, and where that's going to lead, I'm guessing it's not going to end up good for the board since all of the hosts will react even without a word to what Ford wants in the park. He is God and the board are just money people. Um, so that's going to be an interesting conflict that rises up there. And then, of course, we got to find out what happens to Elsie, what Maeve does with all of her new powers and programs and possibilities, uh, and, of course... The continual pursuit in towards Wyatt. So a lot of stuff still ready to go on, a lot of places to dig into. Uh, I think next week we're going to start dealing with some bigger conflicts. Anyway, so, but we have to wait till next week for all of that to happen. Enjoy what I had to say? Go ahead and hit that like button. You hit the subscribe button. Come back every week. Like I said, we got four more episodes in uh, this season, so lots of fun stuff still coming. What do you think was going on? You can throw those ideas down in the comments section below. We'll keep a little dialogue going until next week episode airs. You can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Darren Jakes. There it is right there. Other than that, I, like I said, I'm going to wrap it up for this week. So I am D, and I am out of here. I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy. Bye-bye.